Hello, welcome back to the game room and the library. Let's get right into the review. Psygnosis is known for a great many things. Futuristic race cars, present day race cars, futuristic ships, and most importantly, cute creatures. While I'll save Levings for another day, today's adorable fluffball is Kingsley, the title character in Kingsley's Adventure. If you missed the previous video, Kingsley's real life origins found him to be a rabbit prince in the rabbit kingdom. A real-world design change presented players with an adopted orphan fox in the lands of rabbits and other creatures. It turns out our little buddy wants to be a knight, but to do that he'll need to pass several tests and complete important quests. These missions will bring him face to face with four dark knights, not that one, and four villainous accomplices to the bad custard, the fired chef who had stolen the queen's book of magic. Kingsley's Adventure presents one of the most polished yet oddly not fully realized worlds the PlayStation can provide. The game is divided into four types of levels. The hub-like castle, several villages, main dungeons, and then Dark Knight, still not that one, arenas. Players will begin in the castle for their apprenticeship training and work their way up the quests from there. Once set on his missions, Kingsley becomes this adorable equivalent of an RPG character trapped in an action-adventure storyline. As the boss characters are defeated, they'll relinquish true knight items that can grant gamers access to the next area. Once into the second stage, players begin to return to previous levels to take on the evil knights in their custom and amusingly themed castles. Once all eight villains are vanquished, the final battle against Bad Custard arrives, and it's one of the game's finest moments. But more on that in a bit. Let's start with the world. It's wonderful and cheeky, and I wish Gnosis had done more with it and the brand. From a gameplay standpoint, there's far more world in the towns than needs to be, leaving one to question if the title originally started as an actual RPG. There are hills, flowing rivers, lively beaches, as well as dreary rain-soaked areas. The dungeons are decorated in animated lava textures, bubbling acid pools, various moving trap-like elements, with plenty more. I'd like to give a special nod to the creative ways Gnosis illustrated various establishments. A giant barrel provides access to a tavern, while a giant anchor acts as a boss arena dragged in from the lake. Inside houses you can find bathtubs, bottles, and books strewn about, all providing proof of life in the little slices of villages that exist. There's also plenty of town folk to talk to, but aside from the mission helpers, they don't have much to say. Sound peeps will find a bunch to love in the audio department. Characters talk in a sped up gibberish akin to Sims games and various rare characters. Dialogue is cute, but there is a hilarious amount of sass to be found when it comes to conquering the boss characters. One of my favorites is when one reveals he's going to turn over a new leaf and get married, have kids, and settle down. Kingsley brushes him off as if he's nothing and sends him to the afterlife anyway. Area and dungeon related tunes are pleasant to listen to, and I never found myself letting them fade into the background. There's almost a Saturday morning cartoon vibe to it all, and it's something you rarely see pulled off well. Kingsley himself is equipped with a jump, attack, sidestep, and backflip moveset. He can raise his shield to protect himself from physical attack, but that ability is where the game starts to fall apart. You see, there's no such thing as personal space when it comes to combat. For Kingsley, to hit someone, players need to be literally up in their opponent's face, or waist, with height taken into account. This means unless one is using the ill-fated crossbow, they'll need to learn the block button's timing. Worse, where they'll need to stand. The enemies, particularly the larger ones, have this uncanny knack for hitting you just right and chopping your health bar in half. There were these moments in both my playthroughs where the game couldn't decide if I was blocking or not, which resulted in a lot of dying and restarting. Back to the crossbow for a moment. The level designers took a strange approach to this weapon, and that choice ends up breaking the game's flow. Kingsley can only hold 10 arrows at once, but he can't replenish them unless he's completely out. This inability to restock arrows on the fly forces players to decide between forging on hoping they have enough arrows, or staying there next to the respawn firing off the last fuse thing and move forward with a full suite of 10 again. This awkwardness in inventory management, when combined with the inconsistent hand-to-hand -hand fights, sours the experience ever so slightly. The annoyance becomes more apparent when applied to the game's unbalanced jump physics. If Kingsley is touched by literally anything, his momentum completely drains, bringing him to an almost standstill in mid-air. This design rears its ugly head in the abandoned castle stage, where traps and enemies are standing at the edges of each jump location. Players will find themselves consistently missing jumps at an absurd pace, 
eventually being comical. It's right about here that one would expect the review to sour out, and you'd be forgiven for thinking so. There's something about the overall experience that refuses to let the more problematic points take over. On my first completed run, I sat for a moment and realized I didn't have a clear opinion. In starting the second playthrough, more observations came into focus. Knowing what to expect the second time around, I found myself appreciating more of the little touches and discovering tricks that I should have realized the first time around. For example, it took the second run to discover the column corners in this boss fight can be used to dodge his firing attack, something I struggled to consistently jump over in the prior gameplay. In areas where I abuse save states on the Polymega, I can now see the errors in my control choices on the real hardware. A slippery slope area that took me roughly 40 tries the first time now took me about 7. I commented to someone that I liked the game enough the first time to go at it again. After the second run, I liked it enough just to want to do a guide for it. Just not right now. When it comes down to it, Kingsley's Adventure is a tarnished offering that still shines bright through the smudges. The love and attention given to the worlds are obvious, with an appreciation for humor and the almost pitch-perfect vibe with game, the game exudes. Yet the feeling that we were denied something greater still lingers after a second run. The edges of the world feel a few feet too far. Some of the characters, like the extras who deserve more lines, all tie to an experience that feels shorter than it should be. In the end, Kingsley's Adventure scores a 7 out of 10 on Game Rave scale. Kingsley's parts are worth far more than their sum, and worth revisiting even after you've already played it. The sass and the cuteness make up for the unrefined combat and the occasional jumping issues. With Hypnosis gone and the character long abandoned, I truly believe our little fox could find quite the home in the modern world, given half a chance. A voice now long forgotten in the world of Mario's and Sonic's. Alright guys. There you have it for the review. Um, I'm not kidding. When I finished it the first time, I literally sat here for about 10 minutes and I was like, I I don't know what to think. I liked individual parts, but like it wasn't until I played it again and with certain things already known, my brain could focus on other things. And it really is through the second playthrough that you really begin to truly appreciate all the little details. Um, one of my favorites that I failed to mention in the script was if there is a person that uh, Kingsley can talk to, his head will automatically look up and turn to them, like, you know, as you approach them. It's just a neat little touch that I loved. Um, but seriously, it is a really, really good game, even if you have to give it two times to get the full appreciation for it. Highly recommend it. Uh, that being said, I will see you guys next time. Any questions or comments, hit me down below. See you then. Take care.